Good morning. All right, the mystery box, we're gonna have to let everybody know if we're about half full. If you have not had an opportunity to sign a card for Ray, um, please check one out on the tables as you leave. Sign it and we'll get them in the box. So, um, first of all, welcome to the First Presbyterian Church. And let's everybody welcome the folks at home on the camera. Because we're glad to have them worshiping with us. Probably half our congregation is online. So imagine twice that many people in here because that's how many people we are worshiping together this morning. And we are delighted, I am delighted to have you here at worship this morning, whether you're in person or online. So thank you for joining us. This morning we do have a very special birthday coming up this week on Tuesday. Ray is going to be 99 years old. Yay! So, can we sing happy birthday? And I apologize. There we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ray. Happy birthday to you. And, and I understand, and uh, Ray gets a chocolate bar. Would you pass it back to him, please? You're welcome. <laughs> All right. But, you know, I don't want to leave anybody out, else out. Like I said, if you haven't already, um, put your card in the box. box please, please do so. The box will be over this way as you leave. Leave, we'll have collecting cards. Um, second of all, if you'd like to help us sing to him again, we're going to deliver the cards tomorrow afternoon at 2 out to Hawthorne. Please join us out there, 2 o'clock. We're going to stand outside. You do have to wear a mask. Um, and we're going to sing to him and deliver all the cards tomorrow afternoon at 2. Please come join us. Um, all right, we don't leave, want to leave anybody else who had a birthday this week out. So those names are Amy Massey, Dave Volkers, Judy Rubenfield, and Mary Gibbs. Are any of you here? Who's here today? All right, happy birthday. And like I said, I don't want to leave you out after church. There's a candy bar for you. Or if, if you are a healthy eater, there's healthy bars as well. So please, please stop by and pick one up, up and know that we are delighted to celebrate your birthday with you. All right. I see everyone has a name tag on. Hallelujah. I'm trying to learn names. So I appreciate you're wearing a name tag. Some of our other folks are also learning names. Um, if your name is wrong, please use one of the black markers and correct it and we'll get it corrected and reprint it for you. Um, and it also helps us get it corrected on the rolls and other places, uh, places so that we have your name, name correct. Second of all, one of the things I noticed last week as we did name tags is that leaving, we were then all huddled around the, jar, the place putting them back in. All right, we have to social distance, so how do we do this? As you leave, Back there, there is a um, basket. Over here, I have a new basket. Please just drop your name tag in the basket as you leave. Don't try to put it back in the rack. We'll give them a day or two to detox, and then we'll get them back in the rack later this week. week. Um, also, that helps with, as you're going out, if you come out this way and I get to speak to you, that means you still got your name tag on and I get to see it. Because last week everybody put their name tags away and then walked past and I'm going, wait a minute, <laughs> I didn't get to read your name. <laughs> so, so just keep your name tag on until, until you, you're ready to walk out. And then, like I said, there's a basket back there and they'll have the white one over here to drop your name tags in. And that helps us to do the social distancing thing as well. All right. Um, let me think, what are our other announcements? Because I forgot to bring them, bring my list. All right. 
We want to remind folks that Wednesday is our um, sewing ladies meet. Meet, come, make a new friend. You, if you don't want to work on the specific project, if you're not good at hand sewing, um, bring your own handwork and just come and join us. Coffee with the Pastor is on Thursday at 10 a.m. And we're going to try to meet out at the Optimist Park, but if it's too cold or if it's too rainy, we do meet right over here at the round tables. So um, again, this is an opportunity to fellowship. Come and join us. Um, are there other announcements? Very good. So three o'clock for the younger kids for online and four o'clock for the older kids again online. We want any youth who are interested to come and enjoy and be part. So. Other announcements? Yes. Hooray, both soccer teams won. Yay. Congratulations, guys. So, other announcements? All right, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. A bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You are clothed in honor and majesty. You are wrapped in light as with a garment. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the God's holy name, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, gracious, loving God, we praise you for blessing us this morning as we come together. 
We praise you and thank you for the time that we have together and the time that we can leave the cares of this world behind and just focus ourselves centered on you. We pray that you will find our offering of praise and worship this morning acceptable in your sight, for it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please stand as we sing together hymn number 288, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, and the words will be on your screen. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad, and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The God's command and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. God formed the creatures with a word and The peace of Christ be with you. Let us share God's peace with one another, remembering to observe social distancing and meeting people as others are comfortable. Peace be with you.
We give thanks and praise that everyone is here and we can greet each other. Having been called to worship by our Lord God and welcomed by our neighbors who have gathered for worship with us, let us come before the Lord humbly, confessing our sins. Let us pray. Most merciful Lord and giver of life, we thank you for the rain this week. We are grateful for your care, keeping us safe and healthy each day and night. Merciful God, in light of your love, we see how often we walk in darkness and refuse to follow your ways. We choose our own comfort over sacrifice for others. We choose to feed ourselves over making certain others have the food they need. We serve our own desires instead of serving you, and we humbly beg your forgiveness. The good we seek to do is never enough to express our appreciation for your goodness. Forgive our short-sighted vision and our selfish attitudes, for we know we deserve none of your blessings. Heal our broken and shattered souls by your forgiving grace. Amen. Beloved, this is the good news of the gospel. No sin is beyond God's grace, and nothing you have done or can ever do will stop God from loving you. As a child of God, know that Jesus Christ forgives you. God's tie, oops, be at peace with one another and forgive one another, for it's in Christ's name that we are for the forgiven children of God. Amen. In response to God's grace and the outpouring of love that includes our forgiveness, let us then generously give back to God God's tithes and our offerings. Let us pray together. God of grace, you have richly blessed us, so now we offer our blessings back to you as a sign of our thankfulness. Pour your Holy Spirit upon the gifts we offer. Send them into the world as a sign of your joyous work of love. Use them to call and welcome into this your house of love all those who are willing to become your friends, our brothers and sisters, members of your family. For it is in Christ's name that we pray, amen. The Lord blesses us in many ways. So today we have an offering of music to the Lord, a time for meditation as we receive an anthem. Let us worship God's holy name as we listen to and for the word of God in our scripture reading this morning. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, my God, my strength and our redeemer, amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Well, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Oh, we are able, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. 
But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the other ten disciples heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them. And they greet ones, the great, their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not to be so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Forgive me, I got pages out of the order somehow. Okay, there we go. All right, what's your favorite meal? Some folks in my family, it's a nice Big Mac over here and a filet of fish and an extra large portion of fries and a great big soda. Oh wait, if you're gonna go out and order a meal, maybe, maybe you want a nice double whopper with cheese with everything on it. A big pack of those onion rings. And again, a nice big soda. Maybe you're one of those folks who likes a supersized roast beef sandwich with the cheese sauce poured over it, some kind of mozzarella sticks, and ooh, one of those mint chocolate shakes. Or maybe you want some fried chicken with really good mashed potatoes, More than one biscuit, can't stop with just one. Got to have some extra biscuits with it and something to drink. Of course, you know, if we're really going out for a special meal, fried scallops, um, Parrot Island shrimp, potatoes au gratin, and some extra hush puppies. Not just one hush puppy. You know, it always says hush puppies with an S on the menu, and then there's only one on the plate. Uh, You know, we need more than one. And, ooh, a brownie a la mode with fudge sauce on top for dessert. Or maybe you're a beef lover and you think of a nice, big, thick, juicy steak hot off the grill with a great big baked potato next to it. Have I made everybody hungry yet? (laughs) All right. All right. When we think about those favorite foods, Foods. Do we sit and consider what makes them taste so good and what all is in them? We don't want to think about it. You know, because what makes them taste really, really good is the fat, the sugar, and the salt. And what are we all supposed to stay away from? Fat, sugar, and salt. <laughs> When you sit down to one of those really, really good, tasty meals, do you know what's in it? Do you think about how many calories and how many grams of fat and how much sugar and how much sodium all of it has? When I was um, at dinner with the Rotary Club in Petersburg and we were talking with a exchange student from Poland who had been in the United States for about three weeks, We asked her how she found the food. She said, well, it's a lot like at home, a a lot of the meals. She says, but Americans have sugar in everything. It's all too sweet. Well, a lot of us don't want to think about exactly what we eat. On the other hand, I am aware. And as I get to know some of you, some of you are very, very aware and count every gram of fat, every little bit of sodium. You are very, very careful about exactly how much sugar 
fat, and sodium as in your meals. Because you know that we can do as much harm to our bodies as we can, can do help to them by what we eat. Usually that kind of awareness is a result of an eye-opening event in our life which has made us have to pay attention to exactly what we eat. Well, the disciples are at a point, point where they are about to receive an eye-opening event with Jesus. They're on their way to Jerusalem. This is the third time Jesus has told them he is about to suffer and die. And they are not getting it. They think, oh, we're on our way to Jerusalem. Something big's going to happen. And they're still thinking about how they can earn their spot of importance in the kingdom of God. They're bickering with each other. They're jockeying for position. They're paying attention to who Jesus talks to and who gets to walk closest to him as they're walking down the street. They want to know who's going to be first. They want to know, can they have positions of importance in the coming kingdom? Now, remember that these guys, before they met Jesus, they were pretty unimpressive people. They were common Joe Blows, just everyday ordinary members of the community. Um, you might say that Matthew was one of the more important ones, but he was a tax collector, and they shunned him. They despised him. His own people didn't want to welcome him. And the rest of them, think about Peter and Andrew, James and John. Have you ever met a fisherman getting off the boat? I'm sorry, they're smelly people. <laughs> They're, these are just common, ordinary guys that Jesus has said, come and follow me. The thing important in their life is that they met Jesus and they followed when he said, come on, I want you to follow me. Now, not everyone who meets Jesus as they're walking and talking and he's healing people, not everybody is invited to come and be one of those disciples. Not everyone gets to go from place to place and absorb all this teaching from Jesus. That's part of what makes the disciples now become special. They, they get to hear what Jesus has to say from beginning to end. They get to see the healings. They are there when he feeds the multitude. They're there to help with crowd control. They're there to bring the children to Jesus. They're there to sit with him and have supper with him as he sits at table. Because they've been chosen, they are at a point where they're expecting the kingdom of God to explode around them any day now as they get closer to Jerusalem, and especially as they get into the city, they're going to want to see the kingdom of God explode around them. They're expecting armies of angels to come down and push the Roman invaders out. They expect then to have important positions in the kingdom of God. And so James and John come up to Jesus. Can we sit at your right hand and your left hand in the coming kingdom? When you come into your glory, can we have those strategic spots that are so important. Because they know that there's power in Jesus and if they're in those spots, they are gonna be men of power as well. And Jesus looks at them. Are you sure you're up to it? Oh yeah, yeah, we, we can do it, do it. Jesus says, you really have no idea what you're asking for. Can you drink the cup that I must drink? Can you be baptized in the way that I will be am baptized? They have no idea what they're saying when they say yes. 
We know how the story's going to go. We know that the cup of suffering is the cup of the new covenant and it's got to be filled with Jesus' blood that the cup requires him to die on the cross. Are James and John ready? Not yet. Not yet. But further down the road in history, when persecutions come and they face the cup, they will be ready. They will drink the cup of suffering that Jesus drinks. And what about the baptism of Jesus? Will they be baptized with? In the Gospel of Mark, the baptism of Jesus is the baptism by the fire of the Holy Spirit. John baptized with water, but pointed to Jesus as the one who would baptize with fire. On Pentecost, that baptism is received by the disciples and the other followers of Jesus, that baptism by fire. But until Jesus dies for their sins, they're not ready for it. The glory of God is too much for sinful humanity to receive. But after the cross, with our sins forgiven, with the blood of Jesus washing them away, baptism by fire of the Holy Spirit does not consume believers, but empowers us to go and spread the gospel and to share the good news in the world. This gift of God, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which is the baptism of fire, is claimed by all of us as well because we have been baptized our sins are forgiven, and the Holy Spirit dwells within us that we might take the gospel out into the world as the disciples did. Yes, after the cross, after they have seen Jesus die and he is resurrected, then they too will be ready to be baptized by fire through the Son of God and the Holy Spirit. But right now, they're not ready yet. Right now, Jesus is trying to help the disciples understand that the kingdom of God is unlike anything they know. It turns the social structures upside down. The kingdom of God is about serving others, not about having power. It's about serving others and serving God. All right, all those really good meals we talk, just talked about, they all have a really good piece of meat in them. Try telling people that you've become a vegetarian, that you're going to only eat low-fat vegetarian foods with no refined sugars and no refined flour. And the first thing people say is, oh, I couldn't do that. Nope, I, I could never do that. Well, I'll tell you, you could if you made your mind up to do it. You could if you decided that you really needed to make a change. change. And with the exception of one medical condition that I do know of that requires a person to eat meat, and there's only one I've heard of, but there might be a couple more, you could change if it meant saving your life and reducing or reversing heart disease, you might say, you know, it's worth it. You could do it. It's not easy. It's not what everybody else likes to do, but you might be able to do it. You probably could if you really put your mind to it. Charles Campbell says, fear and insecurity of doing things differently the fear of the unknown is what gets in our way of making the changes and hearing the changes that need to be made. Made That may be part of why the disciples are having such a hard time connecting with what Jesus is teaching. They understand the power structures of the world. They know how the world works. And the coming kingdom of God, God of glory, means a big show of power 
Sitting at Jesus' right hand and left hand would mean sharing that power in their understanding of how the world works. And Jesus, James and John want to be ready. They want to be ready and in the right position. At least that's what they thought. And fear of the unknown kingdom of God that Jesus will usher in is possibly why the disciples are not fully grasping what, God, what Jesus is talking about. Their eyes are veiled from the depth of service that Jesus is really calling them to. The future that Jesus is calling them to is one of long service to God, of dying to self, and being slave to all, being a servant of all the people around them. If we take Jesus seriously, if we strive to be great in God's kingdom, and we strive to be servant of all, if one of us wants to be first, we too have to hear that message that we are to be slave of all, servant of all. This is a lot harder than being vegetarian, friends. <laughs> it means loving God, trusting God for everything we need. It means loving each other with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our body and our strength, and with all of our spirit, with everything that makes us who we are. We are to love each other and love God. And that's hard. It's really hard. As our congregation seeks to discern God's call into the future, we cannot let fear and insecurity about what God is going to do hold us back and say, oh, well, we've never done it that way. We've always done it this way. Because God's not calling us back into the past. God is calling us into a glorious future. God has already laid out the path for us. God knows where the path goes and where God wants to lead us. And it's a path of service and dedication that glorifies God and glorifies Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Right now, though, we have a task, and that is to discern the path and where it is going for our church, where God is leading our church in the years to come. We're not there yet. The disciples aren't in Jerusalem yet. We're not there yet. But we have to get on that path and focus on it and keep following it. Je Jesus calls us to really care about people, people we don't even know, and put their, their needs first. This may be the hardest thing the church has ever done. And without the help of Jesus, we cannot do it. We need to depend on God. We need to discern where God is calling us. We need to prayerfully and carefully look for where God is calling this church. On the other hand, loving people the way God instructs is a way that, will, that we will make a difference and change the world. Jesus came as the Son of Man, the Son of God, and is our example of how to live. Jesus guides us, knowing that we can never live up fully to God's expectations. Our calling, like the disciples, is to follow Jesus as closely as we can, seeking God to forgive us when we do not measure up, and to continue letting Jesus li lead us as we try again and again. We're called to work hard at loving each other, not to earn God's love, but out of thankfulness that God loves us without regard for our sin. Agape love, the kind of love that Jesus showed us, is love that puts everyone around us first. Imagine a world where everyone put their neighbor first and worried about their neighbor's needs before their own. 
and their neighbors were doing the same for them. It would be a really different world if we all lived that way. The kingdom of God is here and now where love abounds. When we cherish and care for each other, when we love as Jesus has already loved us, when that happens, when we practice kingdom living and kingdom forgiving, there will no longer be loneliness and there will be an abundance of care for all. When we pray, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, when we pray, we ask God to send the kingdom. Our church is asking God to give us a vision of our mission in helping to bring about God's kingdom. What's our part? What does God want us to do? How do we live so that that kingdom comes and explodes around us? Do we know and understand fully what we're asking for? Probably not. No. But we know that it will be more wonderful than we can imagine. We know that it will be God's will. We know that it will be a place that all of us want to be. Jesus came to forgive our sins and died on a cross to take our sins away. We have a tremendous amount to be thankful for. God loves us more than we can ever understand. We must not look back. Instead, we need to pray our way forward and live loving our neighbors outside the church as much as God loves us inside the church. We need to be seeking to be faithful to God's vision for our congregation and ready to serve God in new and unexpected ways. Because friends, you are the body of Christ at work in this community, here and now, in this time and this place. All praise and glory be to God, amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you call us, that you tug at us, that you are open to hear our prayers. We ask that you would guide us and help us discern how and where you are calling us as a congregation to go. Open our eyes that we might see clearly, for it is in Christ's name we pray, amen. This morning, um, as we seek to continue to be faithful servants to God, God, let us offer to God those who are in need of prayer in our community. I would lift up before you the family of James Hampton, who died a week ago and whose funeral service was on Friday morning. Are there others in our community who need prayer? Others? Then let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Lord, you are a loving and giving, glorious Lord God. And we just thank you for all your blessings, for the blessing of health, for the blessings of family, for the blessing of being your congregation together for the blessing of being able to get together and worship you and celebrate your love. Lord, we pray for the souls of the people in our community who are lost and who do not know your love. They are missing out on so much, Lord. Help us to find a way to reach them. Help us to know how to share your love with them. Help us to know how to find the people who fall through the cracks, who are missed, who are invisible to our sight. 
How do we find them? How do we minister to them? How do we show your love and be your hands and feet for them? Lord, we pray for all those in our congregation who are homesick today, for those who feel isolated, for those who are just lonely. We pray for those who hurt in their backs, in their knees, in their arms, their shoulders, their legs, or any other joint, Lord. We pray that you would take their pain away. We pray for those who suffer with a disease, that you would heal them, take the disease away. We pray for those who have issues of mental illness or confused thinking for whatever reason. We pray for clarity of thought for them. We pray that you would guide their understanding, their memories, and give them back their lives. We pray for all those who grieved for lost loved ones, whether recently or in years past, that you would comfort them, sustain them in their moments of grief. Lord, we pray for all those with broken, pained souls, that you would heal your people at the very depth of their being. Lord, you know our needs. We pray that you would be with us, guide us through the processes and the work that we have in front of us as we prepare for the future and look to you for guidance. And gracious Lord, in your merciful, loving way, we thank you that you are always open to hearing us when we pray. And so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, if you would, please stand and sing with me in the garden. This is not in our hymn books, but it should be in your bulletin or it'll be on your screen. It's one that many of you have said you wanted to sing. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and I hear a voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks I'd 
stay in the garden with him. Though the night around me be falling, but he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to Let us pray. O God, whose name we have praised in this house of worship, make us equally quick to exalt your name in the world of work and in the daily tasks of our lives. As here we have honored you with the words of our mouth, let us there honor you with the deeds of our hands. Having worshiped the Lord, let us now depart in service to our Lord Jesus, amen. And as you depart today, may the grace, mercy, peace, and love of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you this day and forevermore, amen. <laughs>